Hello gaming people, Toby from Pixel Pop Network here, and today I'm taking a look at Yondor, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Uh, produced by the Prideful Sloth, which is a Brisbane Australian based team, which is really just the icing on the cake. This game is gorgeous, and I don't need to tell you that, you can see this for yourself. Uh, parallels are going to be made to Nintendo based games, uh, obviously. That's fine, I don't see that as a negative. Um, a lot of work has clearly been put into the visuals, and I think they look fantastic. Uh, I'm playing the game fully maxed out. Um, I don't think it's going to be awfully demanding. I could be wrong, but it's certainly playing very smoothly. I'm using a keyboard and mouse for this playthrough, but the game is compatible with Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, various other controllers. Um, this is a point of the game just after the sort of intro sequence. Um, our ship has crash landed on this mysterious island and uh, we're sort of let loose in a open sandbox world. Um, we do have a quest line, there is a main storyline to the game and I'd probably urge you to play through that first um, only because it will open up the map and it will uh, sort of introduce you to some of the main characters such as the the craft masters and things like that it'll take you around to all the different areas uh, show you the different cities what have you the game is pacifist in nature there is no combat at all uh, there's no swords there's no monsters there's no fighting um, there's no death uh, but that's not really a bad thing because it's I suppose been made up for if, if that's the the right way to express it by the sheer number of things that you can do. Um, the world is extremely richly detailed. Uh, I, I tend to sort of try and jump through walls, off walls, off the map, up mountains and go places I'm not supposed to. Uh, and rather than um, penalize players for that kind of behavior, the developers have instead looked at uh, areas where players have uh, moved into regions perhaps they hadn't expected, and then tweaked it so that that was uh, rewarded instead. So there's been often times where I've sort of wall jumped my way to the top of a mountain, thinking, ha ha, uh, I'm outside of the, the realms of where you want me to be, and instead I find a treasure chest or some sort of other Easter egg. And that's really gratifying because the game absolutely encourages exploring uh, and you can just lose yourself in this world for hours, you know, trying to find everything. And there's an awful lot of that. If you're someone that enjoys treasure hunting, collecting, um, you know, achievements, that sort of stuff, you're going to have a fantastic time in Yondor because there's just so much of that, uh, including these cute little guys. Aww. So hidden all around the place are cats. Now this guy's fairly obvious but some of them can be really tricky to find and the only reason you know they're there at all is because of the meow awesome um right so you've probably yeah, you see me i'm picking up some stuff here uh there will be so much crafting later uh, i'm not going to spoil it and show it all to you but you'll find that for yourself crafting plays a huge part in yondo i have Oh, thank you. Um, farming also plays a big part. And uh, I have completed this game, and yet uh, I've still barely touched on the crafting and farming. There's just so much of it, uh, which is great. Um, you could rush through the main story reasonably quickly, um, much like, say, Skyrim. Um, I'm pretty sure if you were keen, hell, keen and hellbent on on defeating Skyrim as quickly as possible, you'd you'd do so in in a few hours. Uh, Yondor is much the same, uh, but it's mu again much like Skyrim. Mm. There's so much else that you could yeah. be doing, uh, and oh. anybody that just rushes through the main story and then goes, "Haha, I'm done," and doesn't come back to the game, um, yeah, that's just foolish. Uh, yeah. 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 So we're just going to finish a few basic quests. 
Because they'll, um... Give us a few tools. Um, there's no currency in the game either. Uh, well, there is a, a particular sort of uh, old kingdom coin, I think, which is more of a premium currency. Um, but for the most part, you'll be buying and selling through the barter system. So if we have a quick look at this chap, um, this is what I can I can take from him. This is what I can buy, uh, so to speak, from him. Uh, so we've got a slight discount on some tools. And then if I look at my backpack, we can see that he's paying double for uh, sticks. So uh, you can absolutely, um, you know, engage in mercantile activities. You, you can move from one place to another and just keep trading up value, which is cool. Um, you'll also have farms where you'll bring produce and, and whatever have you to, to trade. Uh... Let's have a quick look now at uh, the player menu. So here's my backpack. Um, it can store quite a bit. Uh, later on farms, you'll have storage chests where you can store your access. Uh, character overview. There's a lot of cosmetics, many of which you can make or find. Um, and you can tweak that up. You can also customize your character's appearance when you start a new game. I just went with the default here. Key items. So this is where you'll keep your tools and whatever have you. And crafting. This is phenomenal. So here we have the Wayfarer, which is sort of your starting skills. It's got a lot of basic stuff. Chef, Carpenter, Constructor, Tinker, Brewer, Tailor, and Master. I have unlocked recipes for all of these in my, my more advanced game, but I haven't mastered anything yet. And I certainly don't have any master recipes. And that's after probably near 20 hours of play. So there's, again, to give you an idea, there's, there is an awful lot of depth outside of that main uh, storyline, which is said you could probably finish in, I don't know, half a dozen hours or so. Uh, but you could just spend an awful amount of time getting all the crafting recipes and making all these things, engaging in trading, whatever have you. Um... Sprites, there's 26 of these guys situated all around the world. Um, you use these to dispel Merc. It's a, a sort of a purpley shadow which prohibits movement. Uh, in some cases it's used to stop you from sort of getting too far in the game too early. But for the most part it's there to sort of um, uh, stop you from accessing treasure. So then you go off and find more sprites and then come back. And then uh, a list of our quests in our journal. I'll pull open the map. So this is our current location, and I'll just zoom out. Okay, so it's not, certainly not as big as something like Skyrim, for instance, but it's incredibly detailed, and there's a lot of um, lateral movement as well. There's a lot of sort of winding, um, there's mountains to sort of wind up and down, there's caves below the ground, so there's still quite a bit despite the size of of what you might see here it can still take you quite a long time to sort of move from one end of the map to the other um so and i feel the play area considering what i'm doing in the game the play area it was was pretty good like i didn't feel that i was constricted um in fact sometimes until you open up all the quick travel uh sometimes i thought it was actually a little too big which is probably a good problem to have uh but once you've opened up those those uh fast travel nodes um, it's not a problem. Uh, as you move in and, and work in an area, you'll f you'll improve the um, happiness, the overall well-being of the region. Um, so planting trees improves things, um, completing quests, finding sprites, uh, maintaining a farm, and removing all the merc. Um, you fill that meter up. Okay, so let's see if we can get some wood. And maybe build a farm. Okay. So we've got a seed when we chop that one down. We'll plant that. Because that'll also continue to improve the the well being of the area. Now you can buy tools from the merchants, although here's a little tip I found I didn't need to. Um, just by completing quests, I got all of the tools. 
Um, I suppose one question that might spring to mind is, can you get upgraded versions of the tools? Uh, I haven't seen them. Uh, so at this stage, I don't think so. Uh, I have spoken with the developers briefly, uh, and I've also sort of looked on the, the forums online, and it appears they're very keen to do um, some DLC post uh, and add extra content to the game. And it definitely lends itself to that. But in a good way, I don't feel at any stage they've taken material out of the game just so that they can sell it later for a profit as DLC. Uh, not at all. Uh, I, I do feel thus far from my play with the game that it is a complete product. Um, and I think the reason uh, there's any talk of DLC and what have you is just because there is the potential there to do uh, an awful lot um, with the game. Um, but obviously, you know, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's important to get this, the, the core product out first. Uh, need a bit more wood. Okay. Trusty axe. Right. We have wood. Away we go. Absolutely gorgeous game. Day and night cycle. So in the bottom left there, under my mini map, you'll also see the time, the season, day and year. Um, I'm, I'm well into year two in my main game. Okay, so here we have some Merc, which was the uh, purple blockage I was talking about. So I don't have enough sprites. <clears throat> I have one sprite, I need six in order to dispel it. That's okay, it's not particularly urgent. Um, all it's doing is stopping me from uh, getting a hold of that chest and whatever other goodies might be hiding in there. So yeah, in order to find the sprites, they're hidden sort of all throughout the, the world. Uh, usually indicated by sort of a blue sparkle. Right, so again, I, I need another sprite. Haha. -ha. Probably went past an obvious one at some point. Right, grab that. I believe we're in the right sp place for a sprite now. Oh. <gasps> right, so that's been repaired. And there's other things like bridges and, and structures that you can build to make life easier. Um, throughout the map as well, uh, and they progressively get harder and harder. Right. We have a sprite. Let's get back to that farm. Okay, back at the farm. Let's clear that merc. Awesome. Oh, oh. Hello, Bushel. Ta-da! Alright, we've rebuilt the uh, crumbling farm after we cleared the Merc. And then Bushel will give us a few pieces for our farm. There's that blue sparkle again, which means a sprite is nearby. Let me stay with you for the rest of the journey. Um, this chest here is for storage. So I can pop anything from my backpack that I like in there. Uh, the chest out the front here uh, is where anything produced in the farm will go for me to pick up. Okay, so we click the book. That allows us to then start um, modifying the farm. So let's pop down... A large animal pen. And I've got to give him something to eat. And drink.
All right. Done. All right, let's get an animal for our farm. I'm going to get a gruffle. Okay, so we go over to some crafting. Make some seeds. That's what gruffles like. So you've got to find the right thing to, to lure your animals to your farm. Um, you can have multiple farms. One in each region, I believe. Or close to. Yay. So cute. The little feet. <laughs> and the cats. The cats are incredibly cute in this. I would love a plush cat. In fact, I'd probably like a whole range of, of plush <laughs> plush characters from this. Uh, toys of the characters from this game. They're just so adorable. Alright. Oh, he went to sleep. Come on. You can do it. Come to my farm. Excellent. Yes, I wish to adopt the gruffle. Be. It is. Excellent. All right. So that gruffle, um, after a day or two, will produce uh, milk, which will get stored in my crate. And that milk I can then trade with merchants for other products, uh, or I can use it in crafting. I believe you can make. Things like uh, coffees and flavoured milks and whatever have you. I may even have one recipe to begin with, I think. Yeah, you can make warm milk. So you need gruffle milk and a coal. Um, yeah, lots to be done. Uh, as I said, I've, I'm probably about 20 hours in on my main game. And I've barely touched farming yet. I've just been so busy exploring the world. And discovering all the, the, the little hidden bits and pieces... Uh, collecting uh, all the, the, the collectibles uh, and just thoroughly enjoying my time with the game. So, Yondor, The Cloudcatcher Chronicles. Uh, I believe it's due later this month. Uh, I really just wanted to get this video up uh, as early as possible to give people an idea uh, of the game. Uh, but for my two cents at the moment, this game is fantastic. Must buy day one uh you're gonna love it it's 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 incredible um i will have a full review uh, closer to the release date but meanwhile thank you very much for watching and stay tuned to pixel pop network